Breaking news, Nikon has leaked new clear pictures of the upcoming Nikon ZF full frame camera. Panasonic hints at some new cameras, maybe micro four thirds. And you've been reading about how you can't copyright AI images? Well, I dug a little deeper and I don't think it's true at all. I'll get into all this, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is where creators go to create a space of their own. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. Pull in your pictures, your video, tell the world about your business and yourself. Create a brand and a logo. All of this is possible with Squarespace. This is so important because when you create your own site off of social media, when people search for you, Google will send them there instead of your Facebook or your Instagram. And there you control your branding, your content. You can have your own store. Make sure your work gets the respect it deserves by starting at squarespace.com slash Tony with a free trial, set it up. And when you love it and you decide to sign up, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Our top story is about copywriting AI images. And there's a lot more nuance to it than you might think. We've seen these headlines circulating that at first glance would make you think all these mid-journey images can't actually be copyrighted. And I was just going to cover that as a quick story, but I always do a little bit more research than necessary. I never simply regurgitate headlines to you. This week's news stories start with this image titled A Recent Entrance to Paradise by the Creative Machine. And the Creative Machine is not a person. The Creative Machine is its own conscious entity. That is not like Mid Journey, which is driven by human prompts. This machine uses neural networks to simulate the thought process of a human and create its own creative ideas. And that's what this came from. At least that's how its creator argues it. Dr. Steven Thaler, a PhD in physics, his first patents for this machine go back to 1994. And when I look at all the media he's created over the past three decades, I see a common thread. Thaler wants the world to believe that he has created a separate consciousness that is not human, that is not animal, and is not just AI as we think of it. This is not chat GPT, which takes in data, regurgitates out data. This device supposedly has been capable of independent thought for many decades. Besides trying to get the US Copyright Office to copyright the image you just saw in the name of the machine, He's also trying to get inventions created by the machine supposedly passed through the patent office. Thaler has been frustrated for decades at the world's lack of respect for this thing that he has created, even though as I dug through it, I really couldn't see any hard evidence of what the machine was doing and how it was working. He sort of see like very long winded descriptions of the theory behind how it works, but we never just see like input and output or whatever it is that it works. So it remains sort of enigmatic to me. But Thaler himself is a very interesting personality. He seems to have some bitterness over the fact that the world doesn't respect the autonomy of his machine. He uses the word autonomy a lot because he wants you to know that this machine is operating independently of human input. Here's one quote, only if it's stinky does it qualify as an inventor. With this quote is indicating the only difference between human inventors and his creative machine as an inventor is that humans stink. Of course, the patent office doesn't see it that way. The copyright office doesn't see it that way because they will only issue copyrights and patents to humans. He also doesn't feel appreciated in his own time and seems to liken himself to some of the great thinkers of all history. Here's a quote from him about himself. People say, who in the hell is Steve Thaler anyway? He's making some really bold claims, he says, about himself. But look at Columbus. He was an outcast for the most part with a lot of ridicule and scorn. Look at Galileo, excommunicated by the Pope, possibly about to lose his life. The community has not made the same leap that they had. Thaler seems to be trying to use the copyright and patent offices to validate that he has created a machine capable of independent thought. And he has been working on this for like 30 years. And so far they completely disregard all of his efforts. This is not about mid journey generated images or whether you can use generated fill and Photoshop and still copyright the image. It is completely unrelated. 
This is what the Copyright Office had to say about it. The sole issue is whether a work generated entirely by an artificial system absent human involvement should be eligible for copyright. That does not describe the process of creating an image with a tool like Midjourney where you put in text and it creates an image based on that text because there is direct human involvement there. And Thaler is very specific that his machine operates independently. Even if Thaler could get a Midjourney image copyrighted, and we'll talk about that in a bit, he would not care about that because he wants the validation that his machine is doing independent thinking because he believes his machine is its own form of consciousness. So for Thaler going all the way to the Supreme Court, the answer repeatedly is no. You have to be a human to copyright something or to file a patent for it. But this brings us to a question that is important to a photographer, which is can you copyright AI images? You really cannot copyright images created by Midjourney. This was recently tested by somebody who made a comic book with Midjourney. And the author wanted to copyright the images contained within the comic book, which were entirely created by Midjourney based on his own prompts. And even though he put some work into writing and crafting the prompts to get the results that he wanted, some significant amount of work, the Copyright Office said, no, that's not enough effort. Yes, humans have to put some amount of effort into crafting the prompt, but the Copyright Office doesn't think that's enough. They want to see you use traditional tools, put some time into it, use some skills, and at that point, it's worthy of a copyright. This is interesting because the Copyright Office did issue a copyright for the comic book as a whole, which consisted primarily of Midjourney generated images with story, with text that was written by a human. But this is not the final answer. The Copyright Office has decided to spend some time this year figuring this out. And they are reaching out to the public saying, hey, we want to figure out what your ideas are. So I don't think this decision has been made. I think it's going to be open to debate. So we will see. But the whole Thaler thing is completely irrelevant to photographers or even mid-journey images. Now, back to new cameras. Camera Beta out of China talked to some people at Panasonic and they said in the next few years, Panasonic will supplement their entry-level and high-end models. I did not think I would be saying that in 2023. A few years back, Panasonic announced that they'd be cutting any divisions that weren't making a profit, and they were aggressively cutting divisions. But Panasonic, though it's been a slow trickle, they have continued to produce new cameras, new lenses, even in the micro four thirds realm. So I'm excited to see what they have coming up next. Now, finally, those Nikon ZF pictures that you're waiting for. This comes to us from NikonRumors.com. And here we see it in the flesh. This is the Nikon ZF, a full frame camera with a 35 millimeter F1.8 lens attached to it. And what we can see here is it does indeed look like a black version of the ZFC that I have here. Though Nikon Rumors did note it would only be coming in black, not silver, which I think is a huge mistake. I think it's a silver that makes it look retro all the cameras are black and I just want something that looks a little bit different than the tourist DSLRs who've been hanging around our neck since literally the 80s. So I do hope that they'll issue it in silver soon, but maybe that's just a little bit further down the pike. While the ZFC is completely flat, the ZF has a little bit of a grip bumped out and I'm glad for that. Now we didn't get a shot of the top plate, which would have been interesting, but it looks extremely similar to the layout on this ZFC. I feel pretty confident saying the dials are going to be similar, which is one dial for the shutter speed, one dial for the ISO, and then an exposure compensation dial. Let's look at the back of the camera for something I find really disappointing. As you look at this, well, it looks completely ordinary and almost identical to the ZFC, but if we look in the upper left corner of the screen, we see an M. That M means that it's in manual mode. This is what I'm disappointed about. This camera still uses the traditional PASM mode dial program, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual mode. And if you watch a review of the ZFC compared to the Fuji camera, you'll see why I find that to be such a disappointment. Somehow only Fuji has figured out how to just let you dial in a particular shutter speed or set it to A for it to be automatic. And when you do that, you no longer need PASM. If you want aperture priority, you put the ISO dial on auto and you put the shutter speed dial on auto 
and then you dial in the aperture. If you're in aperture priority and you think I need to change my shutter and you grab the shutter speed dial and turn it, well, nothing happens. So you get into this situation where it requires an extra unnecessary step. Instead of simply turning the shutter speed dial to what you want it to be, you actually have to change modes first. And now you have completely defeated the entire purpose of having these separate dials. It does give you the analog look and the analog feel. I wish they could get the analog function. So why can't they do it? Well, it's probably just a limitation of the operating system here. All of the big complaints about modern cameras really seem to come from the fact that they use primitive operating systems. And even making a change like getting rid of PASM modes would require such a significant overhaul of their very primitive operating systems that it would take a lot of software development. Nikon is willing to create a new form factor for a camera body, but they're not willing to change the software in such a way that would actually make it feel cool and be fun to use. And that applies to all the camera manufacturers, except apparently for Fuji. Here's the final photo with the flip screen flipped out. No surprises there. This is exactly what we expected. It'll be a versatile camera for both stills and video. Nikon Rumors also posted a video to their Twitter, so you can see them kind of shaking it. And I think the shaking is maybe it's demonstrating the image stabilization or maybe it's just making it more difficult to fake it via the use of special effects. Be sure to go to NikonRumors.com to get the latest news faster than I can possibly deliver it. And hey, since you're interested in Nikon stuff, go to this link to check out the big summer sale that Nikon is having because they have pretty huge discounts on a lot of cameras and lenses. In the comments down below, tell me what you think of AI copyright. Should they be able to copyright AI images? How much effort is enough to justify a copyright? Are you interested in the new Nikon ZF now that you've seen it? Or are you like me, where you want analog functionality, not just analog form? No matter what your aesthetics are, squarespace.com slash Tony will allow you to set up a website that reflects your preferences, your design, your brand way better than social media possibly could. Stop sending people to Facebook or Instagram. When people Google you, they should find your own website with your own custom domain name. And it has never been easier than squarespace.com slash Tony. I promise you can have something up and running in just a few minutes and it will look beautiful and work on every type of device. Take appointments from clients, sell items in your store, just about anything you can imagine starts at squarespace.com slash Tony. After you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Don't forget to subscribe because we have some really cool reviews and tutorials coming up very soon. Bye.